Welcome to the next video in our series explaining how to build your own quadcopter drone. In this video, I will explain how to program a one-dimensional Kalman filter to calculate the absolute angle of a quadcopter. In part 14, we learned that you could calculate the angle with two methods, gyroscope rotation rate integration and accelerometer trigonometry. We also found out that both methods have disadvantages. With rotation rate integration, we have an ever-increasing error on the angle because you keep dragging all past errors with you. This is clearly visible on the red graph. With accelerometer trigonometry, vibrations have a huge impact on the angle, as you can see on the orange graph. Fortunately, there exists a mathematical method that allows you to combine both measurements without their individual disadvantages, the Kalman filter. Let's start with the integration of the rotation rates, which we derived in part 14. In order to derive the Kalman filter, let's change the notation of the angle and call it the Kalman angle. Remember that the rotation rate in degrees per second is measured with a gyroscope. Now let's assume that the resulting angle is not its final value, but merely a prediction. Because it is a prediction, it has an associated uncertainty, which is equal to the uncertainty of the previous iteration and the iteration length, ts squared, multiplied by the variance on the rotation rate. The variance on the rotation rate is nothing more than an estimation of the error on the gyroscope measurement. Let's make an educated guess and characterize this error with a standard deviation of 4 degrees per second, knowing that the variance is equal to the squared deviation. Now we can calculate a new prediction of the angle, which will be equal to the sum of the prediction of the angle with the so-called Kalman gain, multiplied by the difference between the measured angle and the prediction of the angle. The measured angle is in this case equal to the angle measured with accelerometer trigonometry. Now, how can you determine the Kalman gain itself? Well, the Kalman gain is defined as the relative ratio of the uncertainty on the predicted angle to the uncertainty on the measured angle with the accelerometer. We will assume here that the standard deviation of the accelerometer measurement error is equal to three degrees. A final equation is necessary to update the uncertainty on the new angle prediction, once again using the Kalman gain. Let's take the opportunity to write the Kalman filter in a more general way. The first equation predicts the current state of the system. In our one-dimensional case, the state vector is equal to the Kalman angle, the state transition matrix is equal to 1, the control matrix is the iteration length, and the input variable is the rotation rate measurement. The second equation is used to calculate the uncertainty of the prediction, while the Kalman gain k is calculated with a third and fourth equation from the uncertainties on the prediction and measurements. Next, you need to update the predicted state of the system with the measurements of the state, which are the accelerometer measurements in our case. In the final equation, you update the uncertainty of the predicted state. Now let's proceed by programming the Kalman filter. First, declare all gyroscope and accelerometer values as seen in part 14. Define the roll and the pitch angles coming from our Kalman filter. Your initial guess for the angle values is zero, because the quadcopter will generally take off from a level surface. Of course, a surface can never be exactly level, so you take the uncertainty on the initial guess for the angles to be 2 degrees. Define the output from the Kalman filter. These are two variables, the Kalman prediction for the state, which is the angle in our case, and the uncertainty on this prediction. Both variables are updated during each iteration. Let's continue with the function for the Kalman filter. The function contains the equations to predict the state with rotation rate integration, calculate the uncertainty on the prediction, calculate the Kalman gain, update the predicted state with the accelerometer measurement 
and finally update the uncertainty on the predicted state. The output of the Kalman filter function consists of a prediction for the state, which is the angle, and the corresponding uncertainty. Remember that the Kalman input contains the rotation rate measurement, the Kalman measurement, the accelerometer angle measurement, and that Kalman state contains the angle calculated with the Kalman filter. The other parts of the code are the same as in project 14. Use a function to read the rotation rate and angles from the MPU 6050, and do not forget to put your own accelerometer calibration values for the numbers highlighted in yellow before calculating the accelerometer roll and pitch angles. The setup part where you communicate with the gyroscope and calibrate it comes straight from parts 4 and 5. End the setup part and start the loop part with the calculation of the rotation rate. Now that the rotation rates from the gyro and the angles from the accelerometer are measured, you can start the Kalman filter function. The first Kalman filter will calculate the roll angle and needs the uncertainty on the Kalman angle together with the measured rotation rate and angle. The output of the filter will give you the updated Kalman angle and its associated uncertainty. Repeat the same lines for the pitch angle and print the predicted angle values. Now upload the code to your TNC and open the serial plotter to visualize the roll and pitch angles. You can observe that both the roll and pitch angles calculated by the Kalman filter behave very smoothly and are therefore suitable for a flight controller. Now pitch the MPU 6050 in the positive and negative direction. The measured angle of the Kalman filter follows smoothly. Repeat the same movement in the roll direction. The behavior is smooth and accurate as well. Notice how there is no accumulation of errors because the Kalman filter compares the rotation rate with the accelerometer values. If you apply some vibrations to the MPU 6050, you will notice that the angle does not change as much as when you would use the accelerometer values. This means that thanks to the Kalman filter, we are now able to calculate angles that can be used in a flight controller. Let's compare the values for the angles calculated by the Kalman filter in blue with the angles calculated through accelerometer trigonometry for an MPU 6050 sensor mounted on a stationary quadcopter. Once the motors of the quadcopter are started, you notice that the angles calculated with the accelerometer reflect the vibrations and that the vibrations increase with higher motor speed. The vibrations disappear once the motors are stopped. The angles calculated with the Kalman filter are not impacted by the vibrations, showing the quality of the applied filter. One question still remains to be answered. What is the meaning of the Kalman gain? Well, let's go back to the equation in which you calculate the Kalman angle prediction from the gain. The gain has a value close to 1 if the measurement of the angle through the accelerometer has the biggest influence on the Kalman angle prediction. On the other hand, the gain will have a value close to 0 if the prediction of the angle from the gyroscope rotation rate integration has the biggest influence on the Kalman angle. When looking at the evolution of the Kalman gain for our application, it indicates that during the first few milliseconds, the angle will be calculated with the help of the accelerometer. However, this effect disappears soon and the rotation rate integration will become more important, leading to a Kalman gain that is very close to zero in steady state. And that's it. In the next video, we will use the angle to develop a stabilized mode flight controller. Thank you for watching this video. Don't forget to subscribe if you like the series. And remember that you can find all tutorials on YouTube and the full code on GitHub. The manual, which contains all explications, is available as well on GitHub if you need some more information. Thanks for watching and see you next time.